Hello, I'm Mrs. Whitaker, and I am a school counselor here at Box Elder High School. I work with students with the last names K through Q. Thanks for turning on this video. I'm going to help you learn about how your ACT score is used. There are four reasons, and I'm, we're going to talk about four of those. The very first one is your ACT score is used to get into a college. That's called admissions getting into a college, a tech school, or some other sort of training program. So I want to point out this document that we've prepared for you, and we use this all of the time. We update it as we receive new information, and uh, we want to try to, to use this as a tool and have you guys use this as a tool. Just a double star note right here, though. This document is meant as a guide. Due to COVID, requirements are constantly changing. Please go directly to the college website for the most up-to-date information. So just a little disclaimer there that we're, we are making every effort to keep this up-to-date, but we really encourage you to go to these websites. We've provided all of these websites for you for each of Utah's popular schools that our students are going to, either a private or some of our public schools, all of our public schools and some of our privates. So. There's the link that can help you get the most up-to-date information. This information we have is fall of 2020. We've gathered it in the last couple of weeks. So for the fall of 2020, it is most up-to-date. Because of COVID, as you scroll down this list, you're gonna see ACT is not required in many places. You go through that entire list, they've just taken away that requirement. One reason for that temporary Removal of the ACT as a requirement is because our juniors and seniors have not had as many opportunities to take the ACT to raise their score and to really work on their ACT because of COVID shutdowns last spring and then continued limits of COVID this fall. Um, I want to point out Bridgerland Applied Technology College. It does not require an ACT to get in but if you have a 17 or higher, it just streamlines you into their adult program. You don't have to take any placement tests. You won't have to take any basic math or English or writing. You'll just be able to go straight into their adult program. So that's a real advantage of having a 17 or higher. Let me teach you a couple of other terms that you'll notice as you work on this form. Open enrollment, Bridgerland's open enrollment, Dixie's open enrollment, um, Enzyme Business College, Dixie, Salt Lake Community College, Snow College, I got, got out of order a little bit here, uh, USU Eastern, uh, Utah Valley University, and Weber State are traditionally open enrollment schools. I love open enrollment schools. That means everybody has a chance to get in. Open enrollment doesn't require a specific ACT score. They give everybody a new chance to get in. So that term open enrollment is exciting and it's exciting that we have so many schools in Utah that have open enrollment. Another term that you might want to look at is this holistic admissions. It's listed in several places. Holistic review. Um, what that means is since they don't have an ACT score, they're going to look at uh, what activities you've been involved in. They're going to ask you questions about your community service, what your goals are. You'll write essays about what's unique to you. They might ask for letters of recommendation. So whenever you see something that says holistic review, that means you're going to have to have a much bigger application. They're going to be asking you more questions than than before, than ever before. So that's a couple of terms under admissions for you to know and understand and how your ACT score may be used. The second way your ACT score is going to be used is for academic scholarships or other types of scholarship programs. So once again, this list right here, some schools are not requiring it this year due to COVID. You can see others are as you get into here, Utah State University, um, USU Eastern, U of U, UVU, Weber State, 
um, you can see that some of those institutional scholarships are still going to require that ACT. So let me show you how to find out what type of ACT you need for those schools. We're going to go, as an example, to uvu.edu. We're going to look up what their scholarship ACT requirement is. So there's the website. I'm going to go to the search bar, and sometimes it's, it's an alphabetic search that you use. Search for scholarships. I'm going to hit this main scholarship page right here. Scroll down just a little bit. You guys will be applying for freshman scholarships and you are a resident because your family lives in Utah. There's a lot of different scholarships here that you can research under UBU. Let's pick this academic one, which is very popular. Our students are awarded this. So under many of the college websites for their scholarships, they'll have something that looks like this chart. We call this an index chart. So let's see how it works. You take your GPA right here, and then you take your ACT score right here. Some students might take the SAT. Um, uh, most of our students in Utah take the ACT. So we're talking about that one today. We're going to focus on this line right here. So let's pretend that I have a 3.5 GPA and I have a 27 on the ACT. That puts me in this green range. With D's in there, if I go down here, that is the Distinguished Scholarship. I would qualify for a Distinguished Scholarship. It tells me that it's for two semesters. I can place it on hold if I'm, if I'm going on a mission or have a gap year. Uh, for certain reasons, they can place it on hold. And then they tell me that I'll get $2,000 for a year, per year. A hundred for the fall and a, a thousand for the fall and a thousand for spring. Sorry, I'm stumbling on those dollars amount. You can see the dollar amounts right there. Um, it tells you what it covers, and then it tells you how you keep that scholarship for the second semester. Let me just show you another example. Let's say I have a 3.7, and I get a 29 on the ACT. That puts me in this purple category. That's an exemplary scholarship. It's eight semesters or until a bachelor's degree is finished. It can be placed on hold. It pays $4,000 each year, $2,000 for the fall and $2,000 for the spring. I have to keep a 3.5 GPA in order to keep that scholarship, and I have to take 15 credits each semester. So these charts right here are really helpful, and we, will, we encourage you as a junior to get into these charts of the colleges that you're interested in. And you can start setting some goals on what type of ACT score and GPA you need to get these scholarships. Okay, so that second reason for the ACT is for scholarships. And that will help you with that. Get into these websites and learn exactly what score you need. The third reason that you use the ACT score is for placement in college classes. Once you get to college, they'll either allow you to skip a class, depending on your ACT score, or they may make you take a remedial class, a class that helps you get ready for their regular level of English or math. So let me show you some examples of that. Let's do the skip first. Um, we're going to go to the Box Elder High School website, go to Course Offerings, and go to our guidebook. Now, our big sister school is Utah State University, so I'm going to use them as an example. But each university has their uh, similar standards like this, and you can go to their websites to help you find this information. Your counselor can also help you find this information. We're going to go down here to USU General Education Requirements. When you go to college, you have general education requirements you have to meet no matter what you major in. These are the breadth requirements for the state of Utah. We're going to focus right here on this one, communications literacy. A really cool thing about that is if your ACT English score is a 29 or a higher, you do not have to take a communications literacy course. You get to skip that course. If you have a math ACT score of 25 or higher, you get to skip a quantitative literacy requirement and not worry about that. 
Skipping college classes is awesome. It saves you money and you save, it saves you time. So we do have students that will repeat the ACT score to meet one of these requirements. The other reason why um, I mentioned before that uh, they use your ACT score for placement would to make sure that you're ready for the college level course. So let me show you what that might look like for you. We're going to go back to the Box Elder High School website. We're going to go into course offerings and course descriptions. We're then going to go find the concurrent enrollment classes that we have available at Box Elder High. The main class that has a minimum ACT requirement is Math 1050. Math 1050 is a required math class for a lot of majors at Utah State University and at other colleges. If you read this description right here, prerequisite, says one of the prerequisites is having an ACT math score of 23 or higher. So if you are trying to get into this math class, you would want to repeat that ACT, practice on the math, and try to get that 23 or higher. So that's a couple of examples of how a college uses by either your ACT score by either letting you skip or having you make sure that you're at that readiness level. For If you're not at a 23 readiness level, then they might make you take Math 1010, Math 97, Math 98, etc., depending on your ACT score. And that takes you more time, costs you more money. So working for that minimum 23 can, can really be helpful to you. About applied technology colleges, I just want to re review for you that getting a 17 or higher will help you get uh, into that adult level training faster because you won't have to do any remedial math or English. You won't have to prove your knowledge in those areas. It'll just streamline you in as an adult student. All right, so then the third, um, I mean the fourth reason that you can use it, uh, ACT score is like I mentioned uh, before, uh, high school courses that we may be offering for a university may require a certain score. And this MAP 1050 is that example. So uh, if you want to take this through our high school, you would also have a 23 or higher. So just a quick review, the four big reasons why ACT Scores are used is one, to get you into a school, two, to get you money for that school, three, it is used to decide what classes you can skip or what extra classes you may need to take to catch up, and then the fourth reason is at Box Elder High, we do have that class that you have to have a certain ACT score in order to take while you're here at school. So thanks for watching this video. Thanks for being proactive about learning about the ACT. And the best of luck to you as you finish out your trimester. Thank you.